When one's making changes in one's life and converting a room that was used for one function into another, there are all sorts of details, all sorts of steps along the, the road of the process. I shared previously in a video some containers that I'd started to obtain in order to, to help in transforming the room that I was using as a treatment room into an art studio come creative studio and in today's video I thought I'd share a little bit of the process along the journey related to one of those containers. So before I go any further if you don't know me my name is Shoshana Shear. I'm an occupational therapist by profession. I'm switching a lot of my or pivoting as they say um, using a lot of my background in occupational therapy to create certain products, also writing books, and moving towards using my art a whole lot more. The particular container that I'm referring to in today's video is the container that has a number of hand-knitted toys in it, knitted mostly by my mother. Um, my mother is a retired teacher. She really loves creating toys for children, and we've been exploring what are the options of doing so. In my beginning to do some research as to how to market soft toys, where the buyer, the buyers might be, what kind of information to put onto the website, whether there was any need for soft toys. I'm not talking about whether we, we perceive a need because there's lots of benefits for children playing with soft toys and handmade toys. The question is, are parents of today's time purchasing soft toys and handmade toys for their children? So I did a little bit of market research and in doing so, discovered a need to, to go through a process of testing the toys, testing the materials used and obtaining a certain scientific mark. That scientific mark or certificate varies depending on what country one would be selling to. There's um, a CE mark, which is the first one I discovered, a CE mark that's applicable for Europe or the EU, and Ireland fits into this. The United Kingdom has a different mark, and that's England, Scotland and Wales. They have a different mark. And in exploring a little bit further, I discovered that Israel also has laws and regulations. I should have really started with that, but actually I did to a certain extent. I asked a question in the craft groups that I've joined for craft groups in Israel, and nobody could really give me any answers. I asked in one or two legal groups, and it's taken quite some time before I've had any response. Um, one of the ladies kindly suggested that I look at look into the Israel Scientific Bureau or organization and I did so and I was very happy to discover that Israel does have a scientific board. Scientific boards and bureaus of standards are not really foreign to me. It's something that I've heard about and learned about for many many years in my family and the reason is that my late grandfather, Professor Vincent Louis Granger, was responsible for setting up the first scientific testing laboratory, which he did in what was Rhodesia, it's now called Zimbabwe. Um, it was the first scientific testing laboratory in Central Africa. Um, later on, he sold that and moved to South Africa, and he was to a certain extent involved in the South African Bureau of Standards, but from this road test was the, the name of the testing lab laboratory. I wanted to look a little bit further as to some of the history of this testing laboratory and I was disappointed to see that nothing comes up on Google search for road test. Um, road, the Google search wondered if I meant protest or row and test. Road test was because of it Rhodesia, Rhodesia was the name of the country at the time. As I say, it's changed names to Zimbabwe. So that was the row part and test was for the testing laboratory. I did know about scientific testing laboratories. So 
as a result, discovering the need for toys to have certain, uh, to be of a certain standard didn't surprise me. And I've been doing some research behind the scenes as to what the procedures that's involved, how we go about doing so. There are some costs involved at various stages along the way. I haven't yet come across a, a mark for if one sells to America or Canada or Australia. I'm still exploring that. As far as I know, those artists and creative people that I've come across on Etsy who are making soft toys and selling them in America don't seem to have this kind of mark. Whether that means that the mark is not happening in America, I haven't yet clarified. A little bit about what this mark is and why it's important and why it's necessary. A number of materials are used in making up any soft toys. If it's knitted, there'll be wool or yarn. Um, some countries call it wool, some countries call it yarn. The importance of knowing what materials are used is because in the dyes or in any of the manufacture of these basic materials, sometimes certain products are used which could be toxic. So if, if a toy is made for a child, we're not wanting to use anything that would cause a child harm. So the materials, the basic ingredients that go into all of the soft toys are important to make sure that they're not going to be harmful for the children at any stage. It's important to know what what is used in making the faces. In the case of the toys that my mother makes, she she's very careful to embroider all of the the eyes and the nose and the mouth, not using any of these plastic eyes that are available. I don't know what the ingredients or the materials are that goes into those eyes, but that's one of the things that's tested and that's questioned as to what is one using for the faces. Then there's a weight test that's that's used to make sure that the different parts of the body are put together in a way that's not going to be not going to come up apart too easily as the child is playing. So the the weights is usually done more on the arms and the shoulders. I would expect the neck as well. Um, and uh, in one article I read there was a need for a, a magnet to be used to make sure that there are no pins that have been left in, which makes a lot of sense to me. The stuffing also, it's very important to know that the stuffing that's used to fill these soft toys is going to be of a, a type of material that would be as natural and possible as possible and not have any flammable, one of the tests that is important. So these, all of these details I'm, I'm still in the process of re researching what other tests and what other information is required, but all of this makes perfect sense to me. And some of the reason is because having worked in hospitals and also in schools, um, I did come a across a number of children who'd been injured, unfortunately, by playing with certain certain products, certain items that they were playing with that could be harmful for them. So this, this has happened in a, a number of different types of play. It's, there's concern as to whether anything could be a choking hazard, the age that a child would be playing with a specific toy, all sorts of important details that go into this. So as a result, if you're not seeing anything about those hand knitted toys up on our website and if there's not too much activity happening on my my website right now the one reason is because I'm researching and finding out how and where and going through the process to obtain the appropriate um, marks the certification and everything that's necessary so that the, t the toys would be completely safe for any child to play with that's what reason number one. Reason number two is that I'm in the process of restructuring and redesigning my two websites. So Be A Happy Mom is being changed and transformed to a certain extent. And I'm splitting off some of the handmade items to go onto the Be A Happy Mom website. 
I'll be sharing more about that as the change takes place. And my Creations from Jerusalem is becoming more what it was to begin with, which is my art. Print on products is still going to be happening there. My books are moving to Be a Happy Mom. And I'll be sharing more about that change as that change happens. As a result, there's a lot of work happening behind the scenes, which is where I've been and why for a few weeks I haven't done any more videos. But since this is such an important topic, I thought I would share a little bit about the fact, let mothers know that if you're purchasing any toys, it is important to know what, where the toy comes from, what uh, materials are used, whether there's anything to be concerned about, if this toy is completely safe. Another important um, detail is whether there are any hard edges. In soft hand knitted and hand sewn toys, there shouldn't be any hard edges. That's more for wooden items or plastic items. We're not doing anything in plastic. At this stage, we're not doing any wooden toys. We're undecided to what extent we'll progress too much with the toys. It depends on how soon or the, the costs involved in getting everything up to scratch and making sure that we, we have everything completely in order. So with that, I have a, an appeal as well. And that is that if you're watching this video and you like the thought of your children having hand-knitted, soft toys to play with and you'd be interested in that my request is that you come on board and join me on my patreon page because as i say there are costs involved and your supporting us would help us to get this process completed so much more quickly if you're interested in knowing what the benefits are of a child playing with soft toys or handmade toys or toys of natural materials let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to put together a video that covers that or perhaps a blog post or both. So let me know if that's of interest to you. And with that, I hope that this has been a little bit of different information, explaining again a little bit more of what's going, going on behind the scenes in changing my treatment room to be more a studio come workshop. And with that, I'm interested to hear from you what kinds of videos you would like to hear more about. There hasn't been all that much interaction happening in the comments, so I'd like to hear from you. I want to know whether you've enjoyed this video, whether you have questions, whether you'd like a different video, whether that's not of interest to you at all. If the videos that I'm making are not what you're interested in, then let me know what you'd like to hear about that relates to either occupational therapy, art, an artist's journey, change in career, pivoting career, or life in Israel. So those are the kinds of things that I'm interested in doing videos on. If you have a different idea, let me know. And with that, I wish you a very blessed day, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Ciao for now.